in this video we are going to see how to find nth Fibonacci numbers so first I will give a recursive solution and then we will see uh, how we can optimize this using the dynamic programming I will also give a demo of the recursive solution and the dynamic programming solution so since we had seen in the earlier videos that some recursive solutions can become exponential in nature after for even a small uh, size so let's start so the definition of Fibonacci sequence is that nh, nh Fibonacci number can be calculated by adding the previous two Fibonacci numbers so these are the base cases because uh, two numbers do not exist before them so we can we have to take two base cases so we take 0 Fibonacci number as 0 and first Fibonacci number as 1 then we have previous two values like 1 is the sum of 0 and 1 similarly 2 is the sum of 1 and 1 3 is the sum of 1 and 2 so similarly 5, 8, 13, 21 and so on so let's see uh, how we will solve this recursively so So if n is less than or equal to 1 then we will return n so for 0 it will return 0 for 1 it will return 1 otherwise return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 so this looks very simple but it's not a very good solution so we will see why it's not a good solution so let's say I'm calculating fib 5 so it will depend on fib 4 and fib 3 I'm not taking a higher number because uh, it doubles at every step so it grows exponentially and we will not be able to draw uh, beyond some number maybe 10 we cannot draw on the paper so fib 4 depends on fib 3 and fib 2 similarly 3 depends on fib 2 and fib 1 and this 3 again depends on fib 2 and fib 1 and this one fib 1 fib 0 similarly fib 1 0 and this is a base case 1 and 0 are base cases so now you see that uh, you have fib 3 here and you have fib 3 here we even missed fib 1 and fib 0 so this entire tree we have calculated we have calculated fib 3, fib 2, fib 1 fib 1 is base case and now here again we are calculated, calculating fib 2 but we had already calculated fib to somewhere down here while calculating this fib 3 similarly this fib, three, fib 2 is already calculated and this entire tree is so this entire tree is redundant we don't need to calculate any of these we have already calculated this similarly this tree is also redundant we had already calculated fib2 so we did so many redundant calculations and you see how the problem is exponential in nature if we don't save these values we will have to re redo these again and in the second level we have two nodes then four nodes then eight nodes so at kth level we have 2 to the power k nodes 
so we need to somehow save these values and here we are not saving like for calculating fifth 5 it will call fifth 4 plus fifth 3 and while fifth 4 has not been calculated yet and fifth 3 has not been calculated yet so it will make a series of recursive calls and once these terminate fifth 4 is calculated then it will move to fifth 3 and recalculate many things that had been calculated earlier so time taken will be exponential here so how can we optimize this so, so now I will give a dynamic programming based solution for the same function so I will name it fibdp So here we will take one array where we will be saving the values and I have taken here those array size with one extra value because we will start from 0. We consider fib0 as the first number and fib1 and so on. Then we can add the base cases here. if 1 is 1 and then we can iterate i equal to 0 less than equal to n plus plus i and then we will do if i equal to if i minus 1 plus i minus 2 and then we will return this value so here no problem will be solved twice because we have defined base cases then so this should be 2 because we know one, 0 and 1 so uh, we are starting from 2 for 2 we will need 1 and 0 which we already have so fib 2 is now present then i will be 3 so 3 will depend on 2 and 1 but 2 and 1 is already present in the array and then we will add 3 here and so on so every problem is solved exactly once so this should be fast and i will give a brief demo of the same and you will see for yourself how this is fast So first I will define the recursive function if n is less than or equal to 1 return n else return and we are done so let's print some values So let's see. So it prints co correctly. So now let's make it 10. It still print correctly. Now let's make it 50. Now 
now you see the application slowing down after 40 it's taking too long to calculate 41 then 40 second even more time and so on so this is exploding exponentially so this will take a lot of time to reach 50 so let's close this application and move to our dynamic programming solution Now we will use this DP based solution here. Just I will replace this with DP and see how it much time it takes to print till 50. So it's very fast, it's done. You can see some negative values because it exceeded the limit of integers. So let's make it long, long. So it very quickly prints 50. Let's try even 100. So it did, didn't even take time of one second. Again it crossed the limit of long long so we, you can see some negative values. But it finished within one second not even one second whereas uh, the recursive solution was stuck at around 41 42 so you can see how much difference is there in changing our algorithm from exponential time complexity to uh, linear time complexity in this case in general uh, we are able to uh, reduce the problem from exponential to polynomial so that's why uh, it's a very uh, powerful paradigm and uh, this is not the best solution here for Fibonacci because we are using a table of size n plus 1 we could have just uh, taken two extra variables uh, you, we will take a window of two like we will uh, first uh, store 1 and 2 then 2 and 3 so we just need two previous values so we could have saved, saved a space here by keeping just uh, array of size 2 but we are using size n plus 1 but otherwise uh, it's fine so so thanks for watching and stay tuned for my further videos